everybody, it's Emily at Arg Schooling, and today I'm going to be doing a sort of overview and recommendations for the Build Your Library 2021 Family Reading Challenge. So when I started writing this challenge, I didn't really know what I was going to do with it. I didn't quite know where it was going to go. I just knew I needed 40 prompts and Sarah and I worked on it together. We kind of batted around some ideas and like after a little while my list as it came together I thought you know this is a really like a comfort reading list and so we turned it into the Hugga reading challenge. So this reading challenge is all about comfort and loving reading again and just like everything good and comforting about books. That's what this is. That's what I'm going for with this. So what I'm going to do today is just sort of read through the prompts and give you some ideas of what you could read for each prompt. I, I'm going to tell you things that I'm interested in reading and I'm going to try to share some things that Sarah, like Sarah's, you can't see, but off camera over here, my bed is literally covered in books. Like, it's covered. And Sarah is sitting over here and she's going to be handing me things. She's my book gopher today. Hello. So <laughs> we're going to run through the prompts. I'm going to tell you things that I might read, things that Sarah might read, some ideas for things. So this is going to take a long time. So we're just going to get right into it. So the first prompt is a book with your favorite color on the cover. This could be anything because obviously favorite color is a very subjective thing. My favorite color is green. And so two books that I'm potentially going to read. I have Rem Remember Me by Christopher Pike, which has green lettering on the cover. And I have Buried Beneath the Baobab Tree by, by Adobe Trisha Wanbani, I think is how you pronounce the name. And I've had this on my shelf for like two years and I want to read it. So it's green. It fits this challenge. So like I said, it could be any color. It could be a little bit of color on the cover. It could be the whole cover. Go nuts. Whatever you want it to be. <laughs> the next prompt is a story that takes place under the sea. You can thank Sarah for this prompt. She finds the ocean and sea life comforting. So this was her special addition to the challenge. And for that, some recommendations I have. I have The Soul of an Octopus by Cy Montgomery. Loved this book. This is nonfiction and it is fantastic. I have A Song Below Water by Bethany C. Morrow. I've heard lots of great things about this. I know it's mermaids. That's it. That's all I know. And a children's book is Shark Lady, the true story of how Eugenie Clark became the ocean's most fearless scientist, and this is by Jess Keating. The next prompt is a story set in a country you want to visit. Totally subjective. It could be anything. Um, I have always wanted to go to England, and so for that I'm probably going to read Tidelands by Philippa Gregory that takes place in the, in the 1600s in England. Sarah's always wanted to visit Denmark, which also happens to be the Hugga capital of the world. <laughs> it's where Hugga comes from, and so how appropriate. But the book that I grabbed off my shelf that happens to take place in Denmark maybe isn't the most comforting read, but it's The, the Boys Who Challenged Hitler by Philip Hoos about a group of, of like teenage boys who worked as the underground resistance during World War II in Denmark. Then the next prompt is a story written in verse. Even though I enjoy poetry, I kind of tend to forget that books in verse are a thing. But every time I read one, I end up really enjoying it. So here's a bunch of things off of my bookshelves that are books in verse. I have these two, both by David Elliott. This one is the is Voices, The Final Hours of Joan of Arc, and this one is Bull. This is a Theseus and the Minotaur retelling. This is a, a retelling of Joan of Arc, I assume, both in verse. I have The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. This was Sarah's recommendation. I don't know what it's about, honestly, besides it, it's in verse. I have White Rose by Kip Wilson. This is about Sophie Scholl and the resistance during World War II. And then I have Under the Broken Sky by Mariko Nagai. And this is middle grade and it's about um, a little girl and her family that live in Manchuria near the border of the Soviet Union right around the end of World War II. So 
I'm really excited about all of those, honestly, because I haven't read anything in verse lately. So that's a challenge I'm really looking forward to getting to. Then we have a story set in a library. And for that, um, I have a bunch of things. These are the ones that I have on my shelves that I could find. But there are other books too that I might mention. So I have The Library of the Unwritten by A.J. Hackwith. And this is a fantasy, I think, about like a library in hell run by demons. Sounds great. I have The Midnight Library by Matt Haig, which I just finished. And it's wonderful. And this takes place in a library between life and death. I have The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova, and this takes place in Bulgaria, and it has to do with Dracula, who is curating a library. It is really good. Um, for children, I don't think I, I can find it for you to show you the book, but I want to say Mr. Limoncello's Library is a book that takes place in a library for kids. Next up, I have a story inspired by mythology, and for that, I have two Madeline Miller books. One I've read, one I haven't. The first is Song of Achilles. I read this a few years back and loved it. This is a retelling of the Iliad from the perspective of Patroclus. It's beautiful. And then I have Circe by Madeline Miller, which I have not read yet and I really need to. And so I, I really want to get to that this year. Circe, I think, is a witch. I thought Siren. Sarah corrected me. And then I have The Way Back by Gabrielle Savitt, and this is Jewish mythology, and it takes place in Eastern Europe in a tiny shtetl named Tupic, and the angel of death is involved, and it's just a Jewish mythology book, and I'm very excited to pick that up. Next, I have A Fairy Tale Retold. What do we have for that, Sarah? Just so you guys know, I spent my entire morning scavenging my bookshelves for, for recommendations for you. It's chaos right now. So first I have The Bear in the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. This is a fairy tale in Russian setting. I honestly don't know what this is. Then I have Uprooted by Naomi Novik. I also have Spitting Silver by Naomi Novik. I just don't have a physical copy of it. I think this one is Beauty and the Beast. Spitting Silver is Rumpelstiltskin. And then Sarah just ran out of the room and came back as fast as lightning with Ash by Melinda Lowe. And this is a Cinderella retelling. There's also Marissa Myers has an entire series. Um, I don't know the name of the, the series Cinder. as a whole. But Cinder is the first book. But I, I believe it's like maybe four or five books total. I only ever read Cinder, which is a Cinderella retelling. But I believe there's like a whole slew of different fairy tale heroines involved in that series. Next, I have a book written by an indigenous author, and for that, I have Louise Erdich. She's written a ton of stuff. I happen to have this to show you, which is The Roundhouse, which I believe is a standalone, but she also has a whole running series. I forget the name of the series. I have A Lots Away by Darcy Little Badger that everyone has been raving about and I must pick up immediately. This is also, could be, um, mythology, I believe, because it take, has to do with um, gods in interacting in the world, I think. I, I've heard it's got like American gods vibes. And then for children, I have Trickster. And this is Native American Tales, a graphic collection. So it's a variety of different authors. It's all graphic novel. It's really great. Next up is a genre you never gravitate towards or that you never pick up. So this could be anything. We're subjective again. So maybe you don't read mysteries, you could pick up a mystery. Maybe you don't read romance, you could try a romance novel. Maybe you don't read fantasy, you could do that. I'm probably myself either going to do romance or fantasy because those are two things I just generally don't read a lot of. One of those things. It could also be mystery because I don't pick up a lot of mysteries. So I have a few choices there. Next is a book about a game. So for this prompt, I have The Blaze Wrath Games by Amparo Ortiz that Sarah just read and has been telling me about how great this is. I don't really know what this is besides, she said it's like Quidditch but dragons, I think. Then I have Book Scavenger by Jennifer Chambliss Bertman, which is about a scavenger hunt with books, and that's middle grade. And then I have Wolf by Wolf by Ryan Groudon, which is about a motorcycle race across Europe and into Asia. This is an alternate history if Germany and the Axis powers won World War II 
and we're following our protagonist who is a shapeshifter and has to win the race and assassinate Hitler. So <laughs> this is a duology too and it is amazing. I've talked about it before in my videos. I can't stop raving about how amazing this is and everyone should read it. Next is a sequel you've been meaning to pick up. Totally subjective again. I have two things that I'm like I need to get to and the first one is a Close to Common Orbit by Becky Chambers. This is the sequel to A Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, which I read like two years ago and loved. So I really need to pick this up. And then I also have A Beautifully Foolish Endeavor by Hank Green, which I'm still like, how have I not picked this up yet? Next is a book with a household pet in the story. There are so many options for this. There is tons of like children's picture books that have dogs or cats as like the main protagonist. There is books like um, Stuart Little or Charlotte's Web. So there's tons of options out there. Three books that I've, I just wanted to share with you because they're books that I really like and think people should read. I have The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness. There is a dog named Manchi in this. I have Good Omens by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. This has Hounds of Hell dog. And then I have My Lady Jane by Cynthia Han, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. And there are ferrets in this, among other animals. I think there's also a horse. Next, I have a book in translation. Okay, so I, I can't, I was going to try to give a children's recommendation to. The only one I can think of is The Neverending Story, which is translated from German. But I'm sure there's many others. I'm going to have, a, have to come up with a list at some point. But Sarah gave me Convenient Store Woman from, by Sayaka Murata, and I believe this is translated from Japanese. Don't know what this is. She had to read it for her class. It's very short though, so that's tempting because it's a quick read. Next I have Grass by Kum Suk Gendry Kim and this is a graphic novel about comfort women during World War II in Korea and it is translated from Korean. And I have The Three Body Problem by Sik Sin Lu, translated by Ken Lu, and this is translated from Chinese. This is the first in a trilogy as well. Next up is a book by a favorite author. This could be anything. Again, subjective. What, who is your favorite author? For me, I'm probably going to read a, the new Neil Shusterman. Is going to be out in February. That's probably my go-to for my favorite author, but I could also read a Stephen King novel. I could also read a Philippa Gregory novel. Um, there's lots of authors <laughs> that I could choose from, but I'm probably going to go with Neil Shusterman for that. Next is a book by an author you've never read from before. Again, completely subjective. Any author that you've been meaning to read or somebody completely new, it could be a debut author. I might try to pick up a Christopher Golden book because I've met Christopher Golden. I've had books signed by him. He runs the Merrimack Valley Halloween Book Festival that we've gone to a few years in a row. And I have never read anything by him, so, so that is a thing I want to fix. So that's probably what I'll do, but there's plenty of options out there. A book that you think will be a new favorite. Again, totally subjective. Could be anything that you think you're going to love. For me, and I'll mention this book again later, but I think I might go with The Thinking Woman's Guide to Real Magic by Emily Croy Barker because this is a book that I just think is going to be great and I've kind of been saving it. Next is a book that was released the year you were born. I had to do some research because I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do for this. And I just got a giant box of John Saul novels. And Sarah said, surely John Saul wrote a book in 1980. <laughs> and I said, why, well, yes, he did. So I looked it up and John Saul wrote Comes the Blind Fury in 1980. So I might go with that. But whatever year you were born, find a book that was written then and read that. Next, I have a book about food. Sarah got me this off of her shelf with The Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. I know this has to do with cooking, but I don't specifically know like what it's about beyond that. But it is YA, I believe. I have a book that I downloaded to my Kindle, Tiny Moons, a memoir about like the experience of eating food in China. <laughs> it sounds great and I was excited when I discovered it. So next up is a book with a house on the cover. I'm pretty sure most of the Anne books, at least this version of them, have houses on the cover. So I just grabbed Anne of Avonlea because the first book is downstairs. I can find it. Then I have um, Sweet Home Alaska by Carol Estby Dagg and this is middle grade and there is a house on the cover of the book. A young adult novel I have 
is Life as We Knew It by Susan Beth Pfeffer. It has a very tiny house on the cover. If you look really carefully, you can see it right here. And then Sarah could not let this moment pass by without making me mention The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune, which has a house on the cover. Next is a book that makes you feel nostalgic. So again, completely subjective, can be anything. What is something that you read in your childhood or that just makes you feel cozy inside and gives you that like nostalgic feeling? I'm probably gonna read some John Saul or some Stephen King for that or some Christopher Pike. Those are all things that I've been wanting to pick up more of that were like my favorites growing up. So that's probably what I'm gonna go with. A uh, new release you're excited about. I've already mentioned that Neil Schusterman has a book coming out in February so excited. It's called Game Changer and it has a, like parallel universes as the like theme of the story. I'm, I'm so excited. But there's tons of books coming out. Maybe I'll put something on the screen. I don't know. But there's lots of new things coming out in 2021 that I'm pretty hyped about. What is a book recommended by a friend? I have been recommended The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden a ton. So this is a thing I'm definitely going to read this year. But I want to recommend two books to you that I think are just no one talks about them and I think everyone should read them and that is We Are Not Free by Tracy Chi and Lovely War by Julie Berry. These are two of my absolute favorite books and nobody ever talks about them. I'm so sad about that. This one came out in 2019. This came out this year in 2020. They're both amazing. This is about Japanese internment. This is about World War One but like as told by the Greek gods, it's amazing. More people should read these. Please pick them up. It would make me so happy. Next is a book that a family member loves. So ask your close family members what books they would recommend to you. Sarah has been throwing these two books in my face for so many years, it feels like. Months? I don't know. The entirety of, of 2020. Sarah's <laughs> <of them> right? <laughs> so, so like, it's only been this year. It feels like years. First is um, Vengeful by V. E. Schwab. This is a sequel to Vicious. And then In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. Both of these are Sarah's favorites. So this could also be a recommendation from a friend if you want Sarah's recommendation. Next is a biography or a memoir. This is a memoir. Also, oh wait, do I have? Yes, I do. Right behind me, I have... Carrie Fisher's Wishful Drinking, and I have Americanized Rebel Without a Green Card by Sarah Sadie. This is a memoir. And I have How Dare the Sun Rise by Sandra Urin Guillemana, and this is a memoir. I do have some options for that, I guess. Next is Read a Classic. So, first let me just say classic doesn't have to mean a book that you were assigned in school. I have some options here that could be, it could be anything. A classic children's book is Winnie the Pooh. That's a classic. A Little Princess is a classic. Charlotte's Web by E.B. White is a classic. Like, it doesn't have to be anything overly complicated. Little Women by Louisa May Alcott is a classic, and it's wonderful, and also very cozy and nostalgic. Then I have the Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde because Sarah really wants to read this and she wanted me to put it in this pile. And I am probably, uh, I might maybe possibly pick up Dune by Frank Herbert. This is classic sci-fi. There's a movie adaptation that I really wanted to see, so I feel like this should happen. Next up is a book published in your lifetime that you think should be considered a classic. Boy, do I have a stack for you. This is where I'm going to get chatty. But I have a few things that I think, you know, I believe should be considered classics. First, I have Terry Pratchett's Small Gods. I love Terry Pratchett. I love Discworld. Haven't read all of them, <laughs> but this so far has been my absolute favorite Discworld book has so much an interesting, great commentary on religion and the way we view religion and the way it works in our societies. Love it. Ark of the Scythe trilogy. This is just like a masterpiece and I think everyone should read it. I think it could be studied and picked apart. Like this is a book series that I literally think about on a daily basis still and I just, I think it's amazing. A children's book that I think should be a con considered a classic is The War That Saved My Life duology by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley. It's great. It's about World War II and one little girl's experience and it's just 
fabulous. The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak I think is already considered a classic, but if, if people don't know that this is a classic, you should. It's amazing. It's beautifully written. One of the best World War II novels I've ever read. It's just so good. And then The Librarian of Auschwitz by Antonio Iturbe is maybe my favorite Holocaust novel, and I've read a bunch. But this one, just, I don't know. I think about it a lot. It's just, it's so beautifully woven and with all these real stories about real people and their lives with it's just a masterpiece and finally one more work that i think should be considered a classic a modern day classic is the piggy and elvin series by mo willems replace all of the dr seuss with piggy and elephant because it's just better <laughs> the stories are great the pictures are so cute and they are readable for all ages like i enjoy reading these stories they're fun and they're great for early readers, and they're just wonderful. We're almost there. We're like halfway, I think. A book that won an award. I don't have anything to show you, but I'm certain that something that I've shown in this video has won an award. Certainly. It must. A book about an issue that is important to you. I grabbed two things off of my shelves. Well, one off of Sarah's shelf, one off of my shelf. This one I've already read, and that's Girls on the Verge by Sharon Biggs Waller, and this is about a girl with her friends and she's trying to get an abortion and then I have Real Queer America LGBT Stories from the Red States by Samantha Allen and this is obviously it's a memoir too so you could use this as a memoir which I might do that as well <laughs> and this is about a trans woman going through the south interviewing different LGBT people so I've heard really good things about it. Now, a book written by a person of color. I've already shown you several, but Sarah, can you hand me like two or three to hold up? The Blaze Wrath Games, which is a Puerto Rican author. I have You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson, and this is a black author. And, whoo, I'm dropping things. And then The Fire on High or Anything by um, Elizabeth Acevedo. Is she... Black is, and Latinx. Black and Latinx. There are just tons, like tons of authors of color to choose from for that. A short story collection is what we have next, and I have a few things for that to show you. I have Trickster again. I already mentioned this earlier for indigenous author, but this is also a short story collection of different mythology. And then I have His Hideous Heart. 13 of Edgar Allan Poe's Most Unsettling Tales Reimagined. This is put together by Dolly Adler and is full of a variety of young adult authors. She also has a book coming out in 2021 that is, this. I think it's called that This Way Madness Lies, and it's Shakespeare retellings. I'm so excited for that. And then I have Hex Life. This is Wicked New Tales of Witchery by a variety of um, different authors, which we got this signed. Sarah had a whole bunch of different authors sign her copy. So like Hilary Monaghan is in here. Kristen Dearborn signed this. Jennifer McMahon has a story signed in here. So it's very cool. And I'm very interested in reading that. Next we have a book that was adapted into a movie or a television show. I've already mentioned several things for that. Dune is adapted and The Knife of Never Letting Go just got adapted. There is an amazing adaptation of Good Omens you can watch on Amazon Prime. Stop it. <laughs> no. Sarah would like me to tell you that there is a stage adaptation of Piggy and Elephant. Can you see that? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But it exists in the world. There might be slime or something. <laughs> yeah, you might be able to find a slime tutorial on YouTube. I don't know. <laughs> Next is a book about music. And what do we have for that? I don't even remember what we have for that. I have Revolution by Jennifer Donnelly. The main character is a musician and she thinks about music a lot and there's a lot of talk within this about that. There's also a character she's following that's a musician. It's... There's a lot going on in this with music. It takes place in France, in Paris. I also have Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. This is probably what I'm going to read for this challenge. This is about the music industry. Next is a book with LGBTQIA plus representation. I've already shown a bunch of things that happen to have 
that in it already. Ash by Melinda Lowe is, is what? Lesbian? Yeah. Uh, we have You Should See Me in a Crown, which is, this is a sapphic book. And then I have I Wish You All the Best by Mason Deaver, and this is about a non-binary character, I believe. I also mentioned Real Queer America, which is all the different rep. Next I have a play. No, this is not a play. Stop showing me Piggy and Elephant! <laughs> so, I don't know. Our Town is a play. Read some Shakespeare. But I will put some recommendations somewhere, perhaps on the screen, once I do some research and give you some ideas. Next, I have a book written by a local author. It's subjective, based on where you live, but for me, I'm probably going to either read um, Christopher Golden, I also have some Jennifer McMahon books that I could choose from. I know I have I have the Winter People. They go together. They're they do go together. I also have some Joe Hill that I haven't read yet, so that's an option for me. But like, find an author in your area of the world and read from them. Then I have a nonfiction book about a topic you want to learn more about. And I meant to grab more nonfiction. This is what I have for you today. <laughs> so I have The Soul of an Octopus by Cy Montgomery. If you want to know more about octopus, they're amazing creatures. So I highly recommend picking that up. But it could be anything you want to know more about. Next is a book about girls in STEM. Two things for this. For children, you could do The Evolution of Calpurnia Tate by Jacqueline Kelly, because that's... The main character wants to be a scientist. I also have Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer, which is about a group of women scientists. Next prompt is a book set in your favorite vacation destination. So it could be set at the beach. It could be set on, like, in the forest for camping. It could be an amusement park. It could be whatever. So for that, we have an odd <laughs> mix of things to show you. Again, Sarah put this in my pile. Aquarium because it's the aquarium. It, this is set actually at the Boston Aquarium where we've been and I've been wanting to go again so that's sort of a vacation. It, there's also some scuba diving so that counts for that. You could read Jaws which is set at the beach in the ocean. You could read The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern which is a circus. You could... I don't know why this is in my pile. Sarah gave it to me and I'm like Snowblind by Christopher Golden. I mean, winter, winter in mountains, New England. I, who wants to winter in New England, though? Like, nobody. <laughs> nobody wants to winter in New England. Come to us. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. A book set some... Oh, The Penderwicks. That's a book you could read. It's a middle grade about a family of girls who are on vacation. Next is a book with an animal on the cover. Oh, goodness. Certainly, I showed you something somewhere. Oh, here comes Sarah with the piggy and elephant to save the day. We got pigs. Or elephants. Uh, animal on the cover of Very Evolution of Calpurnia Tate. There's also an animal on the cover of Sweet Home Alaska. I believe there's an animal on the cover of Wolf by Wolf. There is an animal on the cover of Trickster Tales. So we've got some animals covered here already. Now let's move on. We're almost there. We've almost finished. The next challenge is to read a book with a cover that makes you feel cozy. I have The Thinking Woman's Guide to Real Magic. I'm going to try to hold this so the light doesn't glare on it, but it just, it's very pretty. I don't know. And then this could also be for several challenges. This next book is translated from something. I don't remember from what. And it takes place in a library. And that is The City of Dreaming Books by Walter Morse. And this cover is just great. It's it's books. I love it. It makes me feel feel very cozy. I think the Midnight Library the Midnight Library book cover is a very cozy cover as well. And then finally, the last of the prompts. There's 40 altogether. The final prompt is to read your favorite book. And obviously, this is going to be different for everybody. Sarah, stop it. <laughs> Sarah's handing me Piggy and Elephant which is apparently her favorite book. Whoops, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm throwing things. But for me, I don't know if this is actually going to happen, but this has always been the book I claimed as my favorite Stephen King, and I want to reread it and see if that is still true, but it is humongous and kind of intimidating. But The Stand is one of those books that I feel like I've said is my favorite so many times, but it's been probably at least a decade since I read it, maybe more. 
So I would like to pick this up. This, of course, is the unabridged version. <laughs> Because it was already gigantic, but apparently this is, is more book than I'm used to. So I'm very curious to see what else is in here, and, or if I'd even know that there was more in here. If I chicken out of reading The Stand, I could read The Book Thief. I could read Pride and Prejudice. I could read Jane Eyre. I could pick up The Knife of Never Letting Go, which Sarah was going to try to hand me, but is too far away. Um, I have lots of options for that. It could be whatever your favorite book is, so... Go nuts. Pick something that you've maybe read 50 times already. Read it again. It'll make you feel happy. So that is it. That is all of the prompts in our 2021 Build Your Library Reading Challenge. I hope you guys decide to do the challenge with me this year. I'm going to set up a group on Goodreads. It's already there for last year's, or the 2020 challenge. I'm going to start setting up the prompts for the 2021 with recommendations. Um, so that should be up in the next week or two so that it'll be ready for the new year. So I hope you guys will join me and have so much fun with this challenge. I want it to be a year of just happy, cozy, falling in love with reading again kind of stuff. Because I know 2020 has been rough on everyone for every for all different reasons. But like I know my reading life has definitely suffered. It's been so hard to focus on books. So I want to find some joy in reading again. And I hope you guys will too. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Happy reading. Bye. Here's the bed covered in all of the books. Thank you, Sarah, for managing to deal with this. Oh, I found her. I can't find my phone. Sarah's phone is in here somewhere.